Hi guys, welcome back. It's Friday morning and we are here with Karen. Yep. Karen, yep. How, how is it going? I, you liking the fall, nice temperature changes? I love it. I love it. Are you fall. loving every minute of it? I'm loving every minute of it. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, anything we say is not meant to diagnose you. It's just meant to give you educational information for you and your doctor to come up with your own conclusions. Okay? So you can do your own research. And uh, Julie's been waiting. We're going to jump right to Julie. She's from California. And are you, Julie, are you there? Yeah, hi, how are you? Hi, great. You had a question. Okay. okay. Hey, I just wanted to tell you guys, first of all, you have changed my life. I've lost 50 pounds, and I'm all the way down to my goal. And I have also, for all your listeners, taken your health coaching class wow. uh, course. And I'm almost finished, and I'm going in the direction of starting my own business. I'm so excited, and I just feel like you and your wonderful wife have inspired me so much and really changed my life. So thank wow, you. That's awesome. That's, great. <laughs> that's incredible, Julie. Yeah, I encourage you to take that course just to dive in. It's really amazing. Yeah. Um, but here's my question. Yeah. Me and probably my clients, hopefully in the future, mm -hmm that I would really, I'm down to my goal. I don't want to lose any more fat. Mm -hmm. And I'd really like to recomposition my body so I gain muscle. Mm -hmm. So how do my macros have to change in order to, you know, look better, you know, and uh, I know things will have to change. But I'm not quite sure how to do it. Okay, so there's a couple points I want to bring up on that. That's a really good question. Um, let's just talk about, let's say you hit your ideal weight goal and you, you don't want to lose any more weight. At that point, you probably want to go up with the fat. Go up with more healthy fat because you're keeping your carbs low, low so it's totally safe. Um, so you go up with your fat, you won't lose as much weight. Then you want to add the exercise component. You want to start working that because that, that'll really spike the growth hormone and physically keep your muscle mass really, really healthy. And, and, and so on some people, like especially if they're, um, they're bodybuilders and that type of thing, or let's say they're 18 years old and they're trying to increase their muscle mass. Um, it, what happens is you have insulin resistance. Insulin resistance prevents the absorption of amino acids. So that's why a lot of uh, people work out. They add more carbs to actually try to force more carbohydrate in because, because they're trying to trigger insulin because insulin is an um, anabolic hormone, so it makes muscles get bigger. But it also catch 22. It creates other issues, more fat. So I, what, I, what you can do is you can start playing around with your macros, specifically your carbohydrates. And normally we recommend between 20 and 50 grams of carbs per day, not per meal. <clears throat> so if you're, let's say you have a good metabolism and you're working it out, and you could probably play around and start increasing those. Start with like 50 grams and maybe go up to 60, 70, maybe 80 grams of carbs per day. You're still way lower than the average American but a little more carbs could actually maybe kind of spike insulin a little bit more. And I'm not talking about sugar carbs, but other types of carbs too. So, you know, maybe you do like um, berries, hummus, uh, things like that. So, um, on a rare occasion, if you're uh, really fast metabolism, maybe some um, yams or sweet potato or something like that. But not, I don't like to get too far into that. You could probably also do resistant starch as a green banana and uh, try that. All right, thanks, Julie. Thanks for your question. And do we want to go to another question? Or do you want to throw up uh, a question out from Facebook? <laughs> well, I'm just writing down where everyone's from this morning so we can give a shout out. First of all, it's all over the United States, too many states to mention. Also, Saudi Arabia, Chile, Africa, Norway, Canada, Germany, and that's as far as I've gotten. But hello, wow. everybody. This is awesome. Thank you. For, for jumping in. Uh, there's a question, at what point can you add fruit back into the diet? Uh, honestly, I do not want you to add fruit into the diet, just simply because it's, it's way too sweet. Now, you can do some berries, but the fruit is just is not going to be an option as far as uh, what I'm going to recommend. And why is that? Because it's too high in sugar. Even an apple? Especially a, an apple. What about an innocent a, apple? An apple has 19 grams of sugar, Karen. 19 grams. Now, this, this, that's like basically, that's like eating a candy bar. And some of you are going to no. disagree. Some of you are going to disagree. But I will say, 
from personal experience, Karen, because I used to do apples like I think one or two a day. Mm -hmm. Just by cutting out that one apple, and that's the only thing I did, I went from like 211 down to 180. Now, you remember the pictures when Jordan got married? Like, my, even my face was rounder. And you were eating really well. Yeah, but I was doing the apples, 19 grams And snacking. Per, you were of, grazing. I was, I was grazing on apples. <laughs> okay. So, um, so no, no fruit. No, you don't want to do fruit. I just want to mention a point about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is becoming one of the countries that are, their, their uh, rate of getting diabetes is just off the charts right now. Wow. I'm going to do a video on that. And, and sometimes you get these people that will say, well, well, people in Japan, they eat rice, so when they're, they're skinny, they don't have problems. Or people in China eat rice, and they're skinny, right? Have you ever heard that before? Sure. Well, did you realize that China has the most people developing diabetes of any country? Like the fastest rate or what do no, you No, no, no. The most quantity of people. Uh -huh. um, the fastest rate is Mexico. Mm, based on all percentage. Those tortillas. But the amount of people in China, are those, those, I mean, it's like, I think it's China, India, and then U.S. as far as the amount of people that are getting diabetes. So okay. it's in China. Um, the trend is uh, worsening for Japan as well. Um, so it's becoming a problem. So you might say, well, I can't have my rice. Well, just do your own experiment and try eating a lot of rice and see what happens to your blood cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And okay. remember the Dave Feldman story. You were at the summit or you heard about the summit or you bought the summit. Yeah. Uh, he did it for just, what, 60 days or something like that? Six weeks. Six weeks. And he practically killed himself. He clogged up his carotid arteries. <laughs> now, I have a question. So you told us the the countries that are the worst what country or area has no or the least diabetes did you ever look that up you know what karen i think i'm going to save that for next friday it means you never looked it up next friday oh <laughs> uh, yeah really oh, <laughs> so okay <laughs> so okay. next friday morning i'm going to reveal that information it's some secret information but i can tell you i'm not sure i'm going to be here next friday morning though oh yeah you'll be here um so, I already planned your schedule. I, I, but here's the, th here's the thing. Um, what was I going to say? Now, okay, so the country, there's a country that has like, and I'm not, okay, so I might be mistaken, but if, I, if my memory serves me correct, Karen, <laughs> there's a country, it's a small country, uh. but they like have like 95% uh, of the population has diabetes. I know, it's but a that's small not the island. question I'm, I'm saying. That's, I'm going to save that for next week. I don't think you really looked it oh, up. Well, you're going to have to find out. You'll have to show up and find out. But I'm okay with that because you, you know so much. You can't possibly know every single thing, although it does seem like you know every single thing when it comes to Only health. about oh, rates of getting, um, um, you know, diabetes in different countries. That's really pretty okay. much okay. But it will be interesting next week, next Friday, to hear the countries that have the least incident of diabetes mm -hmm. and metabolic disease in general and know what they eat. Well, like, that's, what what is their that's diet what we're going to be moving shortly, as soon as we reveal that. And then we'll... To that country? Yeah. So that way we can prevent diabetes. Okay. On that note, Karen, we're going to go to Renee. She's <laughs> from uh, California, San Antonio. Uh, no. Are you San there? San Antonio, California? Yes, hello. Hi, how are you? I didn't know there was a San Antonio, uh, California. It's San Antonio Heights. Ah. We're about 50 miles east of Los Angeles. Okay. Okay, cool. So you had a question about keto and your blood pressure, right? Yeah, so I've been on it for five days. I've lost six pounds. What? Um, I normally would have spiking blood pressure. Um, I was on. I put. I was put on spirolactone. So my question is, I was noticing that my blood pressure, was, which was usually around 130 to um, or 120 to 130, is now at a, as around hovering around 100 for my top number. Okay. So it's basically lower. What, what's your bottom number? Um, seven about 74, 75. Yeah, I, I think that's a good thing, Renee. I think what happened is if you actually lost. Just realize, like, the most fat an average person can lose, average, is about two pounds of fluid per week. Given the fact that you lost six means you dumped a lot of water weight. So that water weight, 
was contributing to more pressure and volume. So you dropped that, the blood pressure came down. I think if you feel fine, ride the wave, you're doing great. I mean, my, pleasure, my blood pressure is pretty low, but let's say, for example, your blood pressure is too low and you want to raise it, just add sea salt. So that's the thing that you probably have to look at is putting back the electrolytes, not just potassium, but the sea salts as well, and until you're, you're perfectly comfortable. But you might be, just be fine the way you are. Okay, very good. Awesome. awesome. All I right. love you. I love you both. I love you both, and I'm hoping to also take your co coaching um, uh, that'd program. Be great. Oh, that'd be great. great. We love you too. We love you too, and uh, yeah, definitely take the course. For those of you that don't know about the course, um, we have this keto and intermittent fasting course, and um, you know, if you like helping people, it's a really quick course to learn and get certified, and then you can help other people. So there's no fluff in that course, though. It's it's just the, it's, it's okay. filled with gold nuggets. And pearls. Yeah. All right, so give me another question, Karen. Something oh, okay. that I can answer this time. What? Something simple. We, I mean, I just have to say, people are on uh, YouTube are listing out where they're from. Wow. I mean, all over the U.S., Australia, British Columbia, Dominican Republic, Brazil, India, Holland. I mean, it's... I think we need to go on a road trip. I mean that would be cool. We but need to get one of the. We need to get like one of these buses and then just take like, the bus and convert it into a little place and then we just go around. Like the Partridge Family. Yes. Okay. Good. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. So. Um, so we have Catherine on YouTube. She's becoming sensitive to various types of food. Mm -hmm. uh, she can't eat almonds anymore. Eggs make her itchy. Things like that. Uh, will it go away? What do you recommend that she do? Well, here's the thing with allergies. Um, one common denominator to an allergy, a true allergy, involves a protein. So it would be like it would be like nut, egg. But let's say your sensitivity to certain foods that are not proteins, and that's more of a, that's a different thing. But if your sensitivity to certain proteins, by avoiding that over a period of time and building up your immune system, typically you can go back to eating it over a period of time. But the real thing you need to work on is your immune system, and that's why I recommend uh, intermittent fasting. That's the best thing for allergies. And then it drops inflammation. And then one last point on that, it's uh, if you drop, if you actually drop your pH and make it more acidic, you can improve the histamine reaction. Because a lot of times these allergies kick in when your body is excessively too alkaline. Now you might think, well, you know, I thought if I'm going through stress, my pH would be more acid. No, 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 stress actually makes your, your pH more alkaline. I just did a video on that. So. Um, how do you do that? Apple cider vinegar on a regular basis. That will help you guys. Okay. There you go. And we do have three questions coming up very soon, guys. So don't leave. Later in the show. You don't want to miss this. Coming up later in the show. Yes. Three very interesting questions. <laughs> very interesting. Fascinating. Okay, good. Hey, what are your thoughts on celery juice? Love it. Love it. Yeah, celery juice says, um, celery juice is really good to help um, support your cardiovascular system, especially if you have high blood pressure, if you can't sleep. It's a calm, there's a certain calming nutrient in there. It's good for a lot of other things, but celery juice is also good for gout and if you have excessive uric acid. And by the way, Karen. Yeah. <coughs> uric acid uh, goes. <laughs> this, is how, this is our dinner table. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, speaking of uric acid. Yeah, uric acid is is kind of associated with certain types of kidney stone ki kidney stones and also um, gout which is pain in the joints right uh -huh. but when people do keto and IF uh, a lot of times they, they start noticing a flare-up of their gout mm. because you have a higher level of um, uric acid when you do prolonged fasting but this is what I need to communicate the spike in uric acid only goes up like a bell curve it comes down slowly right before you you know it's it's not like forever, it kind of comes up and goes down. And the reason why it comes up is because uric acid is one of the most powerful antioxidants the body makes, even stronger than vitamin C. Your body doesn't make that, but still, it's, it's like an antioxidant. It actually is there to clean up and help repair the system um, and, and build it back up. So it's not a bad thing, and if you just do a little celery or celery juice or even lemon juice, um, that that can help you real fast. Upside of vinegar too, that will help. Okay. 
All right. So, apple cider vinegar is a good thing to have every day for everybody or, or just for remedies? The, the time that you wouldn't want to have it is if you have an ulcer. Mm. So, like if you consume some apple cider vinegar and you have it, more, it's burning more, then don't take it. Also, I, I like to just also, um, like if you take it and you don't, if you don't like it, if it repels you, if you just don't want to have it, nice. don't have it because your body doesn't need it. Uh, most people like it. Um, I highly recommend it for many reasons, um, but it'll actually help you lose weight because it increases the um, the receptor for for insulin. So it decreases insulin resistance and it drops your blood sugars, and it's good for people with blood sugar issues. But you could have it in the in the digest formula is apple cider It's in my vinegar. digest formula. It's, it's in there. It's, if you don't it's like, like to drink it. Half I don't it, like to drink it at right. all. Right. It has betaine hydrochloride and apple cider vinegar powder. You take it as a tablet right before you eat. And that's a, it's a convenient way to take it. But yeah, you can do either way. Okay, good. So who is it here? Um, now I just, I, meant, I lost her name. All right. You but no, I know what the question is. Okay, what? She's uh, on uh, YouTube, is asking us what we're going to have for Thanksgiving. Well, we're going to have definitely, uh, you know, I, I have some um, recipes from the years. I, we can actually release them, and we'll promote that. Phone's um, ringing. But let me just, let me, hold <laughs> on, guys. Phone's... I just need to answer this phone. <laughs> it's probably your mother. <laughs> um, so... So I have some things we'll actually release, but um, you know, you can do a really good Thanksgiving dinner without having to do all the carbs, but you have to just be smart about it. We have some recipes. We'll have to release that. Yeah. Uh, are we going to do a video on it? Probably not this year. Not this year. But we have next a year. lot on our plate schedule-wise this year. No pun intended. Usually. Ah, uh, <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> But we, we usually have a huge Thanksgiving and we invite the neighbors and any misfits that aren't going anywhere. This year is going to be a little different. But usually we'll have a bird, we'll have a, an organic turkey, and we'll, I usually make salmon, like a citrus salmon kind of thing, just put a little you know, lemon on it for, for flavor. Um, we always have um, like green beans and cauliflower mash and uh, just all kinds of all kinds of things. That's right. Pies, cheesecake, my pecan pie, which I I might have to make anyway, just to sit in a corner and eat it, because it's so awesome. If you haven't seen the recipe, it's on our site. It's the most unbelievable. The pecan, pecan pie. pie. It's good. It's okay. very good. Okay, questions. Okay, hey Rhonda, you're from Missouri. You had a question. Go ahead. Yes, I want. To, I'm considering a 30 to 40 day fast. It's the longest fast I've ever done. I think it's two weeks, and it's been years. Um, and I just want to know if is that dangerous? And I'm prone to cramping. Would it be okay to do electrolyte? And what's your suggestion? Well, I'm going to recommend um, play it by ear. You know, go day by day, see how your body feels. But you definitely need to actually take electrolytes and sea salt. That would be a given. That's what I would really recommend. You know, let your body tell you. If you're going and you're going through this and you're feeling great, ride the wave and see if you can go for it. Um, but your body is going to be tapping into its reserves, so it's going to use the nutrients. So you want to just definitely uh, beef those up. No pun intended. Um, but yeah, so I, I like longer fast and... Um, the 40 days? And 40 nights, yeah. I mean, there's, there's people that do it all over the world for religious reasons. It, the thing is, like, these prolonged fasts, if you actually do it right, and I'm talking about um, with electrolytes and sea salt, and you go by how you feel, if you're not, if you're feeling strong, go for it. And if you have weight to lose, why mess around? Just jump right in. There's people that will um, have a lot of weight to lose, and um, if you're burning your fat off, why would you stop and start eating? You know, does that make sense? Sure. Seems like an awful long time. Well. She's asking, so uh, she wants to do it. She's yeah. done two weeks. Of course, the average two person... Two weeks is long for me. I tried. average person, I have them go into it slowly and just right. let their body tell them when they're done and they need to eat. So now here brings up a question, Karen. What, yeah. When do you think... What's the best indicator that you need to eat? Well, I can tell you for me when I do it fast. Yeah, go ahead. So I just wasn't feeling strong anymore. Mm -hmm. I got a little lightheaded when mm -hmm. I got out of bed. Okay. And... Um, 
What about the passing out? Was that a good indication? <laughs> well, you know. I didn't, I did no, not pass out, no, but kidding. you know, the first couple of days I just ignored hunger and then I did okay and I felt good and then like mentally I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. But then physically I didn't feel so great. I just felt a little weak and I felt a little dizzy and I, and I immediately, I mean, I guess I, I could have experimented more with some sea salt or whatever, but I just bailed on it. Those of you that are doing intermittent fasting, um, I always recommend do the intermittent fasting for a longer period of time until you get your body fully into ketosis, where you're actually have adapted. Now you're burning fat, because if you have a blood sugar problem, hypoglycemia, and then you're, you're not doing it with discipline and consistency, and then you jump into a long-term fast, fast yes. you're gonna basically, you know, it's gonna be rough because you haven't converted yet. Once you convert to fat, it's like, it's a lot easier. Yeah, or what about, you know, okay, I'm at one meal a day. And then maybe those meals are getting a little smaller and a little smaller. And then maybe you skip a day or you skip two days. And, you know, and you see how you do. And then you go into a seven day fast and see how that goes. And then, yeah, because I always you know, it's ask like it. this crazy, I mean, I'm not saying that the caller. You're calling people crazy. No, <laughs> I'm not saying that that action is crazy, but if you, you know, like you're saying, if you're just eating normally and just go, oh, I'm just gonna fast. I mean, you, you're probably not gonna feel great. It, you you right. know, you, your body has to be strong enough <clears throat> well, there's to a, do that. There's a point where you're gonna, let's say you're doing one meal a day and you're ready for your, for your meal of the day and you're not hungry. Right. That's when you have to go, well, why are you gonna eat? Because your body's in fat burning. So just let your body tell you when you should start doing more fasting. Okay. That being said, Karen. Yes. I'm going to Nancy from Indiana. Okay, Nancy. Are you there? Nancy. Nancy, we'll, Indiana. we'll come back to you. Let's go to Dave from Clearwater, Florida. Are you there, hey, Dave? Hey, Clearwater. Yes, I'm here. Hey, Hello. Dave. Hi. You had a question. Uh, I had a question. Yes, I wanted to know. I've been on keto for almost eight weeks now, mm -hmm. and uh, I found it surprisingly easy to uh, cut out the carbs. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have uh, much keto flu symptoms, and uh, I pretty much just started off eating two meals a day, and it was going fantastic. And then around, uh, let's say, the end of six weeks, I switched to one meal a day, and I was surprised to find that that was also very easy. And uh, so I did that for about a week, and towards the end of that week, I started to notice really strong, I guess, keto flu symptoms. I was pretty surprised by that. And so what I basically did is just ate a bunch of fat that day because I was having a lot of cravings for carbs. But I just wanted to know what you would recommend mm -hmm. uh, for something like that if that were to occur. Yeah. Are you doing any B vitamins, nutritional yeast, or electrolytes? Um, I do take electrolytes every day because I do get, I, w I usually wake up very thirsty and like with a headache. So mm -hmm. I've been supplementing that with uh, electrolytes and I take magnesium. I haven't done the B vitamins, but mm -hmm. I do eat tons of vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, exactly like you say. And uh, I was wondering if maybe that could be something. Yeah, it's the B vitamins and or the sea salt. So plug those in. And you're going to find the transition into this is going to be much cleaner without symptoms. So try to try to do that, Dave. And uh, thanks for your call. Awesome. All right. Now, Lisa, you're from California. You had a question about candida, right? Yes. Hi. 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 Uh, yeah, I've been doing keto since June. And I have other health issues. We've talked before. I have Lyme disease. And so it's a little more complicated with food allergies and such. But my question is... I have, I was keto adapted for a while, and then because of Lyme disease, I went on antibiotics, mm. and I went on them for three months, and I was doing pretty good, and I was even doing probiotics, mm -hmm. um, but then when I stopped taking the antibiotics, went on to a different regimen, which is not antibiotics for my um, Lyme disease, I um, noticed that I was having issues with candida, so I've been on, um, I've been really trying to address that, but with keto, i I'm really, and I've been off the antibiotics for about five weeks, about six weeks, 
but I'm not keto adapted. I'm always hungry. Mm -hmm. I'm, I only do two meals a day, usually sometimes three meals a day, but at least five to six days a week, I do two meals a day and I intermittent fast for at least 18 hours. Um, but I'm not able to get keto adapted mm -hmm. and I'm really hungry. So my volume, I've been eating more and I'll eat the meal and I'm still hungry. Yeah. I'll so, tell you, I'll tell you what I think um, is going I, on. I want to be able okay. 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 So I think what's going on, Lisa, is that uh, you took an antibiotic, it killed off the good and bad bacteria, and now you just are deficient in, in flora or your bacteria, which, see, the bacteria, um, they, they basically eat the fiber, and then they make uh, butyric acid, which actually really is important in insulin resistance, blood sugar. So if you don't have the capacity to um, make these factors to help blood sugars, your blood sugars can crash and up, up, up up and down. Also, without um, all those bacteria, people tend to be hungrier, and they tend to be um, have more blood sugar issues and, and have more insulin problems. That's why they eventually gain weight. So, I would recommend focus on just focus on building up your flora. Maybe even go to three meals, no snacks, and then kind of gradually go to two meals and no snacks, and go back to where you were, uh, because you just have to reestablish the flora in your gut. That's pretty much it. Thanks, Lisa. Now, I know Nancy, I just want to see if she's on the phone because I try to get her. I just yeah. want to see because she's been Go waiting. For it. Are you there, Nancy? Hello? Hey, Nancy. Hi, how are you? You had a question. What, Hi, what is I'm it? Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, yeah. Um, now, I have, I have two issues. Uh, one is so simple, one question is so simple. It's about the wet grass powder, the green powder. Um, I try to, like, take it every morning on empty stomach. Mm -hmm. But um, I have a problem with that. I just can't. Uh, I feel like I want to throw up or something. It's not about the flavor or anything like that mm -hmm. because it's good, actually. But um, I just, I don't know. I have, like, um, a nausea, and I just want to throw up, and, like, I feel a contraction in my stomach. Okay. So um, should I take it, like, after I eat or something? Yeah. Or Mix it with food. It's a very just, concentrated... Like, it's a very concentrated nutrients so some people like need to take it with food not a problem um, because on an empty stomach it's like whoa a lot of nutrition at once so um, yeah that's what you do Nancy and then you had another quick question right okay uh, yeah and now uh, like I started three weeks ago and um, the first week was perfect and I was like surprised actually because I didn't expect that from myself mm -hmm. it was perfect everything goes very well and um, like uh, I lost a lot of inches in my waistline, and uh, I, I started with two meals a day, and then just go to one meal because I wasn't hungry, mm -hmm. and uh, everything's very good. Mm -hmm. Till suddenly, like I have a day, and uh, I just was so hungry at night, mm -hmm. and um, there's uh, some stress situation going on there, so I just start to eat like yeah. sugar stuff and tomatoes. I'm not sure why. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure like tomatoes and sugary uh, stuff. Just to do things. Yeah. And, uh, let me tell you what to do, And since okay? that, I just... Let it. me tell you what to do. Yeah. Uh, the tomatoes are actually fine, but uh, when you're doing... Go to one meal a day, make sure you increase your salt. Salt helps the blood sugars. Now, you said you also experienced some stress. That's probably what dropped your blood sugars because it activates cortisol. So, it's very simple. Very, very simple. You just eliminate all stress in your life, and that should solve it. Um, I'm just kidding, but, but you just need to um, be... The more stressed you are, the more disciplined you need to be with this diet. Do not go to the sugar. Now you're, now you're into the trap. Now you're going to want more sugar. So sugar, was it begets, begets, or begets more sugar? I don't even know how to say it. Begets. That. Begets, okay. That's good. So what you want to do, go back to what worked and stick to that, Nancy. All right? Hey, we should probably ask a question. Yeah, I was I just going to say that. I was just going to say that. And then I have three questions from social media here. Okay, Is guys. The one? first question is, out of all the foods on planet Earth, mm -hmm. which one has the most vitamin C? I'm sorry, vitamin E. Vitamin E. Okay. We already did C. So vitamin E. What foods, guys? Go ahead and type down what you think. Let's see if you get it right. Okay, good. Yeah. In the meantime, in the I meantime. have some questions here. Yeah, go ahead. So Francesca on Facebook, she says, I already take the gallbladder formula supplement. I don't have a gallbladder. I still get bloated after mm -hmm. having high-fat meals. Should I supplement 
with another enzyme or what should I do? I would recommend supplementing with more an acidifier. There's something I have called Digestive Plus and I always recommend that with the gallbladder because if the stomach isn't quite acidic enough, you're not going to be able to release your own bile that's supposed to be kind of coming out. So you're dependent on this external bile. So bile is dependent on the pH. Um, so you need to, because it's there to neutralize the acid. So if you could just add more um, acidifiers, apple cider vinegar, and um, you know, like betaine hydrochloride, which is in the Digestive Plus, right before the meal, and then take one gallbladder after, that should solve your problem. But don't forget to continue to do intermittent fasting. So you're, you're only doing like this huge fat and then you let your body reset over your period of time. Because if you're doing three meals and a lot of fat, probably not a good idea on the gallbladder. Okay, good. So uh, how much sugar, I assume the question means in grams, mm -hmm. can you have per day? Because I remember you saying, you know, <laughs> look, this is a legitimate question. Okay, sorry. Right? You say, okay, well, you should go for your foods, should just have one gram or less than one gram or less than two grams or something like that. So is there a sort of like a danger gram that you go, oh, I'm going to have something and it has mm -hmm. less than two grams, right. but I'm going to have that three or four times a day. Kind of like saying, how many cups of vodka can I eat per day to prevent? Well, I would like the answer to that question. No. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to obviously keep it zero sugar. But I just want to say, like, it's hard because you're actually reading ingredients and sometimes there's some stuff in there and you're like, the sugar. Right. So um, I would recommend uh, keeping that sugar down to like two grams, one gram or less. A day. Total or in whatever you eat? Well, it really depends on, like, if, you're, if I say per food and you have 50 of these foods that have one gram, you know, use your common sense. It's kind of like, I would just try to keep the sugar completely out and I don't, I'm not going to tell you like per food. I'm just going to say or have this thing per day. I would just use okay. judgment. Don't have the sugar because what will happen, it's going to keep your insulin high and you're going to keep wanting sugar. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Now the other question is, how about the eight glasses of water mm -hmm. a day? Mm -hmm. What about it? Well, what are your thoughts on that? And if you, is that important to do while you're on keto and IF? If you're doing that, should you just add more electrolytes? The, the thing is, when you do keto, it is true that you're going to lose more water. So you, of course, need a little bit more water. But you want to kind of go on your own thirst. This idea that you need six cups a day is arbitrary. It's, it's not six on cups. It's eight six, glasses. And eight glasses, eight glasses is generally um, eight to 12 ounces, depending on the glasses that you're... Yeah, this is just an arbitrary. It's based on no other than someone's opinion. So I would just go on your own thirst. And let's say you're prone to kidney stones. Okay, good, then have more. Mm -hmm. But this whole thing, we, if you're forcing yourself to drink excessive amount of water. Or the people who are carrying around gallons. Yeah, especially if you're working out. I don't think that's healthy. Right. So when you drink too much water, you dilute the electrolytes and specifically sodium. And so now you have less sodium, you're going to feel weak. And you actually will start to retain fluid in your brain. And it weakens the heart, the electrolytes. And it, it could kill you. Yeah, it does. As a it does note, kill certain people that drink too much water. It's called water intoxic uh, intoxication or intoxication. There's another word for it too. Hyponatremia. Okay. Let me do that because he knows everything. Mm, hey, let's know. let's look at the answers here. What do we got, Karen? So okay. highest vitamin E food on planet Earth. What do we got? Did anybody answer that question? Oh, okay. I'm sure there's everyone answering. Almonds, bell peppers, red peppers, sunflower seeds, avocado, mackerel, uh, sunflower seeds, leafy green vegetables, uh, sunflower seeds, Himalayan. Oh, that might be it. Let me get over to YouTube and see what these guys say. If, oh, avocado, avocado. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Wheat germ, um, salmon and avocado. Um, okay, that's good. All right. Yeah, that's kind of, there's not, I mean, a lot of people didn't, didn't answer. The answer this. is wheat germ. Wheat germ. Yeah. We only had a couple of we people. Have, here's the thing, guys. Wheat germ that. is the highest thing uh, because the vitamin E is in the, 
in the, is in actually the wheat berry. So all the like the refined grains in the flour of like the breads, pasta, cereal, cracker, you know, that you have, it comes with a, with a little seed, okay? And that seed contains some seriously concentrated vitamin E. But when you, when you extract it, raw wheat, wheat germline, you get this oil that is really good vitamin E. Now, I have a question, wait. Well, I'm not done talking yet. Wheat germ? Just, yeah. Wheat germ? I used to eat that when I was little. They sell wheat germ. We would have it for right. breakfast. That's right. But Are we're you saying about wheat germ oil? So I can't have wheat germ. What did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> I got a oil. little distracted because I, know. I, I got excited because it's like you know when you it's like one of those. There's comfort a little foods. bit of carbohydrate in the germ, but if you have the wheat germ oil, it's pure fat. But you can't have wheat germ oil for breakfast. You can take it in a tablet. That's <laughs> just a. Debbie Downer. Here's the thing, guys. Um, you don't have to do the wheat germ, but I'm just saying that is the highest concentrated amount. And it also okay. is really good to break down scars, too. But, um, but a lot of you guys were close because almonds really is high, uh, mm. sunflower seeds is high, avocados are high. Um, right now, I'm into doing the, um, the almond, I'm making my own almond milk. Right. And that's From the Summit. What was that company called? Why did you ask me that? Because no, oh, I don't know. Because you know everything. No, I don't. So here's the thing: the almond milk, when you make it yourself from raw almonds, you get some serious vitamin E. Now, I will say, it's not good for small children. I mean, like infants. You don't. It's not a replacement do, for. You don't want to give formula. your infant um, any of the plant-based milks. Okay, I'm talking like the oat milk, the soya milk. The um, rice milk, rice milk, almond milk. Or the almond milk. You don't want to do that. I'm going to do a video on that today, and uh, because it's it's extremely low in fat and other nutrients, but it is it does have vitamin E though, so okay. that's one positive thing. Um, but anyway, that was a long answer to a that short question. That was a long question. answer. I know I distracted a little bit, but well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go right to Marlene. She's from Puerto Rico. Okay. Are you there? Yes. Hola. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Hello. 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 Yeah, what was your question? Hello, hi. Yeah, is it um, in the last two weeks, every week I'm doing a four-day fasting, and then one meal a day, mm -hmm. but I'm not losing any pounds. Okay. Why is that? Okay, so um, if you're every week, you do a four-day fast, and you're not losing any pounds, that's, that's a miraculous thing to have happen. I've never heard that before. Um, then that means you must be going through a healing mode where your clothes might be shrinking, hopefully. No, the clothes and, aren't shrinking, honey. <laughs> okay, your body's shrinking and the clothes are hanging <laughs> off you. Your clothes are expanding. Your body is shrinking. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. That's what um, I'm here for. That's right. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so I think uh, if that happens, um, you want to also to really make sure that it's, um, you're focused on getting healthy first. So as your energy high, as your cravings go away, uh, how is your stress? Do you have any other metabolic problems? You need to look at those things. And the question is, what is the one meal a day? What are you eating in the one meal a well, day? Well, she's eating cook cookies and candies. Uh, no, mm -hmm. she's not. But I mean, that would be something to look at. Even, even so, if you're, you're fasting four days the whole day for, for per week, and you're only eating three days of the week, and you're not losing any weight? One meal a day, right. Okay. Yeah. So I think maybe she should fast for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. That would do it. Okay. Okay, so do we have a, a question? No. Okay. Here, yeah, we do, here. Okay, good. Okay, good. So here is your question. What's good for nail fungus? See, we can't make it through an hour without <coughs> talking about fungus or I thought I thought we talked about this like you you want to ask me any questions but that one question fungus and exuding no you want to you want to put liquids you want to um, handle this from the internal yes, inside out you take a good probiotic there's one that I have it's a, it's effective microbes it's uh, online you can check it out but there's a it's a friendly um, bacteria that you take internally so then you don't get this overgrowth but you can also do topical things like tea tree oil. You can put um, oregano oil, 
externally on the surface of the body to get rid of that. And that really works as well. You know what? We need to go to another question because uh, we're rapidly making good time here. And uh, oh, yeah, I have yeah. question number two, Karen. Okay. You ready for this? I'm ready. And then I'll have a third question. And Right. Well, we gotta when go. is the best time, not like of the day, but... <laughs> In life? No. In the journey when, of life? When would be a good time to take ghee? Like with what condition or body problem that you have? When would wow. be the best condition to start taking ghee? Now, ghee is is butter without all this the protein and the solids. It's kind of like they heat up butter. They take out this solid and they have this pure oil. So when would you oh. want to take that? I think I know the answer. You, I know you know the answer. This is for I, them. I, I, but I didn't immediately know, so I'm, I'm kind of happy now. Okay, good. So go ahead and answer us okay. as we go on to the next question from Susanna from Kentucky. Oh, Susanna. You had a question, right? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Hi. Uh, this is a non-keto question, and uh, I just want to know what is the uh, side effects for uh, hepatitis A vaccination? Oh, vaccination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do we have an opinion on that? <laughs> do we? <laughs> I have some opinions. Um, here's the thing. I don't have that data. You can look it up. Just look up the side effects. Um, for vaccinations in general, and also you can see uh, hepatitis A uh, side effects. Uh, I don't have that memorized, but I'm sure there is definitely a list, and then you have to weigh it out, you know. But yeah, sorry, I couldn't give you the exact answer on that, but thanks for calling, Susanna. All right. Um, do you have one? A quick one? Uh, a separate question, not the answer to the question? Not yet. We've okay. got to wait for people to answer it. Okay, good. So, um, Lido Keto has leg cramps every night. No matter what this individual does, taking magnesium, mustard, potassium citrate, vitamin E, and is at his or her wit's end. There's two things you need to do. One is increase uh, sodium. Okay, increase more sodium in the diet, salt. And number two, vitamin E. Did they mention vitamin E? Uh, yeah. Okay. The next one could be, it could be B1. You mm -hmm. might need B, B1. But if you've done all that, then you need to resort to pickle juice. Pickle juice actually will stop a cramp pretty fast. Isn't there sugar in pickle juice? Not all. Not Bubby's brand. Bubby's. You just pitched. Okay. Bubby's. Okay. So now let's go to the... The answer, when is the best time to consume ghee? Very few answers coming on this, but here on Facebook, Mike says intestinal problems. Melvin on YouTube says IBS. Oh. Uh, and also another IBS. SIBO. C I think some people, someone says you did a video on this. Did you do a video on this? See if you okay, are... so this is why I brought this question up, just to see if you guys are watching the <laughs> videos. And yes, I just released a video on this, so you guys, you guys are correct. The answer is uh, infl inflammatory bowel problems. Okay, so you guys are good. You're watching my videos. Good. But yeah, so you, you, you know, here's the thing, Karen. Yeah. Um, ghee is, has been used for many, many thousands of years. Many, and many thousands. Yeah, right. And, and it's good for intestinal stuff. It's really good if you have uh, damaged colon, um, like you have um, irritable bowel syndrome or diverticulitis or colitis or um, any of the problems there. Because typically what happens is that when you, the, the fat in ghee is called butyrate or butyric acid, and that feeds the colon. But if you already have damage, you, you're not absorbing that fat, so you don't get the benefit and so you might be fatigued, you might have blood sugar issues. And so if you actually add more in there, just straight pure butyrate, uh, and other things too in the, in the fat, there's fat-soluble vitamins, um, you can really help those colon cells. So it's really good for people with GI problems. Now what if you, um, you don't have a gallbladder or you, mm -hmm. your gallbladder needs help? Well, can that is, be, uh, make you nauseous or ghee, be hard? Typically the ghee does not uh, irritate the liver in most individuals, but on some people it may, uh, especially if you consume it with 
other things. So if you're going to do ghee, I would recommend just pure ghee at one time. Don't mix it with like a, a, a keto bomb and the sugar alcohols and the this and the chocolate and all that. Just have pure ghee and see how you, how you do. Now, does it count if you cook with it? Oh, it, it withstands majorly high heat. It's the, it's the best thing to cook with. So is it okay? Like you cook your eggs yeah. in ghee yeah, and that's your good. serving. So yeah, mixing it with protein is okay. Yes, yeah. but if you're trying to get the benefits of it, you know, have some on an empty stomach. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And by, by the way, guys, do not leave because I have one last question. Okay. Coming up later in Coming the show. Coming up later in the show. Stay tuned. But I do want to take a call from Chris. Chris is from Thailand. Hey, Chris. Hello, Doctor Berg. Hi. Hi. What's your question? Thank you again for taking my call. You're welcome. Yes, I'll just go straight to the question. It was a privilege talking to you last time. So I have a, just a few questions I want to ask you and would appreciate your answer. Number one, now it's been more than a month and I'm feeling amazing. Everything is perfect. Of course, the problem I'm facing is with family and friends and their worries. Like, you know, I will die soon. I will have a heart attack on ketosis. Right. Although I'm so convinced, I, of course, follow you and everything. Just like to know. If there is a test that I can do because I don't really know, like to check my current, uh, you know, medical condition, and I can always take it up for a month or two, so to prove everyone, you know. So, what would you recommend for that? Well, first of all, you need to get new friends. Okay, that's the, that's a given. Find some friends that are friendly to keto, keto friendly friends, keto. Actually, and find some family that's also friendly to keto. Uh, that will solve your problem. But I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding about that. Um, here's the best test. If you really want to know the best test uh, for all of this would be a CAC test. It's a, a coronary artery calci calcium scoring test. That is hands down the best test to indicate your um, cardiovascular function. And if it's good, then you're going to be fine. Um, so I would check that. There's some other good tests too. You, if the, the HDL is the good cholesterol, that should be high, okay? That's, that means that um, HDL goes in there and takes the excess cholesterol and pulls in the liver. Um, I would not worry about LDL, and, I, and the reason I want to say this is because usually it will go up temporarily on keto, and I want you to watch my videos on that because I've just, by the way, I'm heavily into it now because I'm almost done. I'm this close to being done with editing the summit videos. It's been, what, three weeks? Let me tell you guys, so what I did is I went through every single big word that all seven speakers gave. And I'm talking, <laughs> there was words. some seriously, like, per speaker, there's like literally 40 big words. And so I defined them, created little mini videos so I can actually, when you watch this program, you're going to really understand it. Um, so anyway, that's what I've been doing. And there's been a lot of points on cholesterol and so there's a lot to know about it and uh, that being said thanks mm -hmm. for your question and we're going right to Karen yeah with uh, another social media question oh. okay good so what do you think about um, coffee laxatives or um, you're talking about uh, not enemas? a laxative enemas? an enema I'm sorry enemas em em um, enema. yeah I'm not against them. Um, Are you for them? I don't know. I think um, they're good short term. I think it'll help purge some some toxic waste from your liver. But just realize when you're doing coffee through um, that area of the body, you're also depleting vitamins too. You're depleting a lot of nutrients. So you just have to put it back in. And also you're really raising the caffeine levels. So um, if you can do maybe an enema with one cup, but that's your cup of coffee a day, then okay, go for it. So, because it's going to absorb. So, if you want to do a coffee enema, yeah, that's your cup of coffee. That's your cup of coffee. <laughs> I guess. Well, what are the benefits of that? Like, why would you do that? Well, it does purge the uh, gallbladder and liver. So, if there's some sludge in your gallbladder, you can sludge. just dump it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. There was another question. I can't find her name right now, but she's like, "This is the last time I'm asking." What do you take to make your hair the way it is for me, right? I, I do keto and IF, and I, I live with him, and I don't know. I take 
electrolytes and wheatgrass juice powder? The hair is really an internal thing. Um, it's not something that you're going to put on the hair. It, it's, right. it's doing the basics. Get the basics in there. There's a couple things that will make the hair uh, really nice. Um, one would be healthy fats, mm -hmm. uh, not a low-fat diet, and a lot of oils. And then the other thing is um, the silica from the diet, diatomaceous earth, which, which is also good, too. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just people. started that. But mostly it's healthy fats, I think, and keto. That's right. Yep. And some really good amount of intermittent fasting, too. All right, so we're going to go to B from New Jersey. You had a question. Go ahead. Hi, how are you, doctor? Hi, great. Thanks. Oh, finally talking to you. I feel so great. Um, my problem is my son. He's 19. He's in college, sophomore, and he recently ended up in the ER because he got dehydrated so bad. Mm. And that's how we found out his blood pressure is through the roof. So now, how... The doctor sent him, after he was fine, you know, went back home after IV bags, um, he was told it's best if he sees a cardiologist who told him he might need blood pressure medication mm -hmm. at 19, which freaked me out. Mm -hmm. I want to, how do I start him off on keto so he understands mm -hmm. what he needs to do? How do I start? Yeah. Because just pushing him, oh, don't eat carbs. He, he doesn't understand it. Right. How can I start him? Yeah, good question. I'm lost. Good question. So this is the big disconnect um, with the medical profession and food. They, they're not emphasizing the power of food. They're, they're kind of downplaying the eating, okay? And they're just focused right on the medication. So um, <clears throat> what, what happens, people go to the Internet and they start trying to get educated because they don't like taking poison, I'm sorry, medications. They don't like taking them. So what you want to do is you want to um, get his agreement on not necessarily telling him what to eat, but have him start watching video after video. And that's just what we do is we educate people. And uh, he just needs to understand the concept behind it and, all, and how it works. I'm going to create a video today, which I think will help. <clears throat> because when you go to my YouTube uh, channel, I have 2,500 videos. So the question is, which one is first? It doesn't come by first video. It comes on random.com videos, and you don't like, you're trying to find this. So I'm going to create a video, and it's going to basically be called, this is where you start with keto, okay? Start on this one video. I'm going to break it down and give you like a little bit of basics, okay? This is what you need to know, and then you can watch the other videos. But you, you do need to um, probably go to my website instead and start watching, do the keto uh, mini course mm -hmm. and start watching those videos, but he needs to go beyond just the carb and understand why would you want to lower carbs in the first place. So he needs to know about that um, because to be 19 years old to have high blood pressure, we we know college students might not eat perfectly 100% of the time. I know that's hard to believe, but some college students don't eat perfect, so there could it's a be rough a time in college, food wise. You're in a budget. It's definitely uh, a lot of junk food. Yeah. And it's a lot of, I mean, I remember what I ate. I'm surprised that I didn't have high blood pressure. So Maybe that's you what you do. What's that? Maybe you did. Maybe I did. But you know what I had? I had ulcers in college. Wow. Ulcers. Now, to get an that. ulcer, you got to be pretty effed up, messed up. Messed up. I said messed up. <laughs> that's what I said. I didn't say this the word. Is, I know. I was pretty messed up. <laughs> I was eating Doritos by the mega packs. I was doing the worst food, and I had no vegetables. I lived on uh, ramen noodles, and then when I when I moved off campus, um, I would eat because um, I worked in a restaurant. Yeah. So I would you eat had steak and chick. Well, I did there, but also I would have like pizza and diet coke for breakfast. Cold pizza and diet coke. Actually, that sounds quite good, though. No, it's good. Um, <coughs> okay, hey, Karen, we... Here's an interesting, okay, an in interesting question from Martin. I don't know how much of this... Okay, here. How come that fructose leads to insulin resistance if it is actually metabolized without the need of insulin? This is a really good question. 
All right, do you have any other questions? No. Now, this is a very important question because uh, fructose is very, very different. You don't have receptors in all the cells for fructose. Um, so why would it actually increase insulin, right? Well, because all the receptors are in your liver, okay, your liver. And so what happens, all the fructose that you eat goes right to the liver. The liver is like, what are you doing? I'm overwhelmed. It's going to overload the liver, and from the liver, then you're going to get this massive conversion to cholesterol, fat, and develop your insulin resistance. In fact, uh, fruit, so it's a different pathway, basically, but fructose will cause um, insulin resistance and diabetes faster than any other sugar on the planet. Wow. Okay? So it's, it's, it just goes through the liver, and that's why it's like, in fact, um, when you take high fructose corn syrup, which is fructose, or agave nectar, it's basically the same damage as drinking alcohol for the liver. Yeah, I did a video wow. on that. But I need to ask the question, the, okay. the question, guys. Okay. What is the best vitamin to prevent blood clots? Okay, now, like blood clots as in stroke. This is a good or one. Or heart attack. What would be the best vitamin that you should be taking maybe from the foods, but we'll just talk about the vitamin, the nutrient, that prevents the blood clots. Go ahead and answer that uh, while I go to Charles from Wisconsin. Are you there, Charles? Yes, I am. How are you doing today, Dr. Berg? Great. What, what part of Wisconsin are you from? Uh, I currently reside in Hudson. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm actually from Kenosha, Wisconsin, originally, so um, I bet you it's... Uh, Probably gorgeous right now with the with the fall. I would imagine. Maybe it's almost over there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> just we uh, we just got a bunch of snow, and uh, I drive for a living, so I don't I don't particularly that's why uh, like it right now. Okay. We don't live in Wisconsin. Yeah, that's, that's why we moved out of Wisconsin. But been, yeah, yeah. Good. You had a question. Understandable. <laughs> so my question is is um, I've got diabetes, and I have stayed off of uh, metformin or anything else. And one of the things I had researched is about berberine. And I have been taking it for a couple months, about 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams a day. And uh, I was just doing some research uh, here the other day on, you know, do you really need to have organic berberine or is it just a standard berberine? Okay. And I was going to ask you about that. But then one of the articles I read said you don't want to take berberine long term because it can cause damage to your liver. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you about that. Is it safe to take berberine over a long extended period of time to help you know, get your blood sugars under control better? That's a good question, Charles. I want to just bring it up right now because it's kind of like you see these articles. You, you pretty much, um, you could find anything, any viewpoint opposing and for any subject on the internet. So you're going to see you're going to see the dangers of eating kale, the dangers of drinking water, like the dangers. So as far as the dangers of berberine, like compared to what about the dangers of metformin or taking insulin or any of these other medications, like, that's like, that would be like way off the charts. So I think as far as the relative importance of that, I think it's very minor. I don't, wouldn't worry about the dangers of berberine. I don't, I don't think anyone has ever had any major uh, problems from taking too much of that. But the big point is, um, does... Um, is it helping you? Is it solving your problem? If it is, great. If it's not, if you haven't seen a lot of changes, um, I wouldn't, I mean, of course you want to get organic, it's going to be better. I can't imagine it uh, being grown with a lot of pesticides, but it may be, I don't know. But the big point is, do you have the basic eating implemented in your diet? Like, are you doing that? Because all these remedies, there's, I, I list all the different remedies for diabetes. And um, they don't really impinge until the basic food, healthy keto, intermittent fasting. Once you focus on that, I'd be shocked to eat. I don't even think you probably need much of anything else. So that's what I would focus on, Charles. But thanks for calling, and um, uh, that was a good question. Okay, we have to go to the answer. Right. What do we got? It's time. Here? So we have a lot of E and K, K2, some magnesium, C, D. Uh, but a lot of E and a lot of K. K2. Come on. Okay, guys. The answer is vitamin E. E. Because like but K, K1 actually um, is for so clotting. Oh, okay. It clots you. Oh, so that's the opposite. Right. So vitamin E, though, vitamin E 
is a fat soluble vitamin that helps prevent the clotting. So the way that you get a vitamin E deficiency is by consuming a lot of refined grains, as in bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, things like that, and sugar. That depletes the vitamin E. So, um, but if you're eating healthy, a lot of leafy greens, you're going to get your vitamin E, uh, nuts and seeds, and then it actually will help you prevent getting a stroke. On that note, there you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned next week. Have a wonderful weekend. See Take ya. care.